The year is 1972. The toy company, Kenner Products, had been in business for 25 years and was currently a subsidiary of General Mills. Their main offices were located on Kenner Street in Cincinnati, Ohio. In another part of the country lived a woman named Allison Katzman. One afternoon, Allison's daughter came home with new contact lenses that accidentally changed the colors of her eyes. This small shift in her daughter's appearance inspired Allison to design a doll whose eyes could change color. She worked with a gentleman named Gordon Barlow to develop the eye mechanism. Once she had a prototype, she began to shop her idea around to several toy manufacturers. But Kenner saw the potential and decided to produce the doll. With that, Blythe was born. Open your eyes to the world of Blythe, the wide-eyed world of Blythe. Pull her ring, see her do her thing, she'll change her eyes for you. Blythe, the doll with a surprise in her eyes. Quick as a wink, her eyes change color. They change expression, too. Blythe, Blythe, changeable Blythe. Look, she's bouncy brown. Wow, green-eyed and groovy. Hey, purple pretty as you please. Ah, oh, beautiful blue. And she's really out of sight in her mod outfit. Blythe, Blythe, a new look for Blythe. Take a comb and give Blythe a swing of new hairstyle. Open your eyes to the world of Blythe, the wide-eyed world of beautiful Blythe. Which Blythe do you like? Blythe, she's from Kenner. Sadly. Blythe was not a big seller and only stayed in production for one year. However, in 2001, after a resurgence of popularity, Takara took up the mantle and began to produce Blythe once again. Now the year is 2022. 50 years past the creation of Blythe. What better way to celebrate such a special birthday of such an unusual doll then holding a convention in the city of her birth, Cincinnati, Ohio. I was fortunate enough to attend BlytheCon 2022, so let me share some of the highlights of this birthday celebration with you. Let's go. I left on Thursday because all of the flights had me arrive in Cincinnati super late at night. My flights were actually pretty easy, but when I finally arrived at my hotel, I was so exhausted and I pretty much fell asleep immediately. The next day, the convention hosts allowed the vendors to set up their booths early. So I woke up and headed to the Cincinnati Music Hall. Isn't this building gorgeous? I arrived a little early for setup so I had the pleasure of wandering the ballroom before any of the decorations were put up. It's kind of hard to believe that in two days time, this room is going to be filled with Blythe collectors. Behind this beautiful metal grill sits one of the world's first electronic organs, the Wurlitzer. This particular organ was originally made to accompany silent films at Cincinnati's RKO Albi Theater. Then it was time to set up my booth. Unfortunately, it was very hot inside and very humid. And the entire setup process took me about two and a half hours. I was not a happy camper. Because I was the last vendor to leave, I got a sneak peek at some of the surprises the host had in store for the attendees. Saturday was the beginning of the festivities. We had a pre-meetup at Newport on the levee. It's like an outdoor mall that sits right next to the Ohio River. Now, I was so excited to chat with some of my new and old friends, 
but I didn't take any video. So I had to borrow these photos. <laughs> Whoops. One of the things that surprised me the most about Cincinnati was the sheer amount of gorgeous murals in almost any direction you looked. That evening, for an additional fee, we had an amazing party on one of the riverboats that floats on the Ohio River. Then Sunday was the big day, BlytheCon 2022. Look at how the ballroom transformed into such a fun birthday party. Next, let's start with the vendor tables, starting with mine, of course. Okay, I had to share this with you. This woman is weaving lace with bobbin thread. I watched her do it for quite a while, and I'm still not sure what kind of magic she's using to do that. Anyway, color me impressed.
There were so many incredible vendors. I'm pretty sure I spent more money than I made. But that's okay. Our girl will only turn 50 once, so we've got to splurge a little here and there, right? One of the favorite pastimes at Blythe Cons is to sit at a table and dress your dolls in their new clothes. Or set them up in some sort of display so people can walk around and check out everyone's dolls. This is one of my favorite parts because then I get to see how different everyone's style is or perhaps find a new customizer to follow. Each attendee received a handful of free raffle tickets in their goodie bags. Then we were instructed to put our tickets into the bags of the items we wanted to win. However, I feel like this was a little unfair because there were over a hundred items that were generously donated to the convention and I couldn't possibly choose. I mean, look at all of this amazing stuff! I think my favorite winner, though, was this little boy who was so excited to win this doll. One of the last events of the evening was the big group photo of all the original Kenner Blythes that people brought to the convention. I was so exhausted from all of the fun on Sunday that I didn't do much on Monday. However, a group of us got together at the Citizen Hotel, where there was a reproduction of the Kenner Toys Heritage Mural but this one had our girl on it. And I simply had to share this video of my beautiful friend Sandra, who is demonstrating the amount of work we go through to get that perfect picture. <laughs> I think some of my best friends in the entire world come from the doll community. I love all of these ladies so much. First, happy birthday to Miss Blythe. Next, Thank you to the convention organizers. And finally, a very special thank you to Miss Allison Katzman. And I'll hopefully see you at the next one.